So by the way, Ross didn't just send a, a, a young college guy out here to go fishing with me that, that hadn't caught a few fish. So Hank actually won the FLW College National Championship on the Harris Chain in Florida this spring. And we were talking about, so again, his personal boat has been a champion for a long time. And we were talking about the oddly shaped and deep um, live wells on the bass cat. So he was sharing with me his experience in Florida. So why don't you talk about that for me, Hank? Yeah, so in Florida, we had the first day right at 22 pounds. Second day was 13, cold front, don't ask me about it. Third day, we had right at 21 pounds. With these live wells, they're deep. They're deep as can be. Overall, the, the inside size is, it's deceiving. Just like the front deck, you think it's gonna be skinny, it's gonna be a little bit harder to fish, it's, it's deceiving to the eye. You have a ton of room to fish and a ton of room to put fish in these live wells. They stack instead of sit next to each other. So these fish, whenever you put them in here, will be able to get directionally oriented as well as the, the angles aren't as abrupt. There's not side walls. So you're not gonna have fish bumping into walls. They're gonna be able to fit directionally and even in side to side chop, banging you up exactly you do not get nearly any bathtub um in these live wells and as well as i i can put my whole arm down in there all the way up to my shoulder um it's it's when you have two pounders it's a little tricky but that's a compromise on one of them say when i'm putting a five pound use your call rings boys <laughs> so yeah definitely um and it's really one live well with a divider right yes yes so there is there is a divider um with with holes in the middle, so it is one 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 live well. You cannot take out the divider, um, but that that's the standard features in there. Awesome aerator. I mean, everything is is you know bass cat quality when it hey, comes to that. Let's take a peek. I haven't looked. Let's look at how the setup is in the tail end of this thing, where your battery set up and your sumps and all that fun stuff. Definitely. Let's take a look. So, on the Puma and the Cougar, you have one solid piece that opens up for your for your battery compartment, your build storage, anything like that. Let me, let me just pause. Ranger boats, it doesn't make sense to put it where it opens this way, because guess what? You hit a wave, the wind opens, it'll tear the hinge off. I speak from experience. So, Basket does this right, they point them yes. backwards. So, the way this is designed, it's just your standard feature coming up and open. Now, oh, it's two gas tanks. Yes. So in the FTD, which this is the the FTD technically, um, which is the full team design or the full team deck, you you're looking at two 27 gallon fuel tanks, okay. and these are the upgraded fuel tanks. So you have right at what is that 53, 54 gallons of, of fuel capacity, which is incredible. Um, everything is is linked up perfectly, set perfectly. Um, so you can see. They, they have really done a nice job of mounting the batteries in there where they're not going to bounce around. There was actually a really interesting video, and I can't remember who did it the other day on the fishing forum, where one of the guys who knows batteries was talking about how much getting bounced around uh, shortens the life of your battery. So these are not those little straps in. They're actually snapped down in there and screwed down in there, which is yeah. nice. They have, they have the set plates on top of them. and. Even if the, you know you order a boat from the factory without batteries, um, this same setup still comes into play. You know it comes with the with the with the set screws and the plates on top to where you can set up the boat exactly like this. Whether you order it from us or you order it privately, it's totally up to you. One of the coolest features. So it's not hooked up right now, but there is a bungee string that comes right up to here to where it'll catch itself. Right. Mm -hmm. The coolest thing when when you're tearing out batteries. In any boat, you have the, the hydraulic hinge that comes up. You can open this all the way up, or you can oh. take the whole thing off, throw it throw it in the bottom of the boat, and you can work on anything that you need. That's brilliant. Yep. So. Okay, that gets that gets an extra point right there. I mean, and we talked about that, right, and how we're going to judge these boats is good ideas that I thought of or somebody else thought of or somebody should have thought of and that's one of them right there yep you got your osha your osha approved charger that goes to your Minn Kota four bank um everything Where is the charger charger's right on the back okay i see right it down there. there by right the way the so uh great access to your bilge pumps you could actually replace a bilge pump without even pulling a battery that's yes, brilliant sir. yes sir yeah it's a nice layout and i am a fan so i grew up fishing the arkansas river and one thing you knew on the Arkansas River was when you ran out of gas in that first tank, 
you better your next direction better be home right uh, I've always been a fan of running two tanks uh, my boats a single tank now uh, I like that that and again that's personal preference I'm not gonna score that good or bad but personally I really like dual tanks and when I'm out fishing by myself, which is a whole heck of a lot, I'm going to fill up the port side tank to distribute my weight better and just have spare fuel in the starboard tank. Again, it's just the boat's going to perform better when the weight's distributed properly. Definitely. Okay, guys, so that's the layout. Uh, we're going to go now and actually try to catch some fish, and we're going to point it. So the wind's actually light a little bit, but we're going to go out and run a little big water on it. Uh, I want to run it into the waves and, and see. I think it's going to perform like I expect it to perform with the champion-style hull, but we're going to go check it out, and we'll report once we, uh, once we get where we're headed. So we continue to talk, and, and he just mentioned something about the height of the seat on this boat versus the rest of the bass cat. So for the bass cat guys, talk about what you just said. Yeah, so what you're going to be seeing and in your Puma and your Cougar, you are on average going to be sitting up higher in the boat and higher above the water. Um, that's going to allow your, your, your stand up ability, your physical, you know, I can stand up, uh, your feet to be down higher, your knees not to be as, as high. When you get into your Eras, your Lynx, your Caracal, you're going to be sitting lower in the boat. That gives it a little bit more sporty feel. Those are also different hull designs as well as different deck layouts. So you're, you're trading things out. Again, that's that's an absolute personal preference, right? I don't like sitting way down in a boat. And now part of that's because I've been sitting so high in a boat for a long time. This feels much more similar to what I'm fishing out of right now. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I'll point out, so I'm co-angling right now. I really like the oh crap handle. It's a really solid, you're laughing. Yeah, but no, I, I understand it. You've ridden as a co-angler yes. too, right? Yeah. So you got a good oh crap handle there and you got a good oh crap handle there. So mine is a strap down here, which kind of works okay. I really, really prefer that. It's just, you're not buying a boat for your co-angler, but you may be buying a boat for your wife. So uh, that's really nice. We did measure, it doesn't look like there's any way a prop would fit under these seats. I think it's too shallow. And uh, Hank pointed out here, you would not want to do it there because it's a fiberglass bottom. But truthfully, any ice chest you want to the back of the boat, because if you know anything about waste distribution, the boat runs faster it's to the back of the boat versus to the front of the boat. So, all right, here we go. We're, we're going to quit yakking now and go back to fishing. couple more things we just we ran from uh, from basically Harvey uh, down to Veach uh, Hank's driving I'm just kind of boat riding and peeling it out we touched 71 what 71.4 71 now we dumped the live wells because there's no sense in having the live wells full um, I'll say the only thing that I don't like about the boat so far is the whole shot but I, I think the, so traditional champion guys know this right the whole shot is it's it's all about the prop if you put it so we're turning by the way we didn't talk about that we're turning a 24 pitch three blade fury for the speed I, you know we need to check the rpms too but i was i, was, I hit right at, it was probably about 62. okay so 62. we're turning a lot of rpms so God, i could really turn a 23. go ahead and fish um i think we can improve the whole shot a bunch now by the way the whole shot we checked was live wells full all the way we dumped the live wells and the hole shot's much better. Uh, but again, I think you could prop it and get a different hole shot. I will say to you guys, now again, I owned a champion and I've ridden in them a fair amount over the years. It has what I'll call a traditional champion ride. And what I mean by that is bow up really good, which I love in rough water, uh, and it lands soft. And, and what I mean by that is when it comes down, it's not a jarring land. It lands soft in rough water and it's really, really dry. I was noticing it throws all the waves out to the side, which again is the, is the hallmark or the traits of a traditional champion hull. So uh, overall, it, it feels to me, other than a much prettier top cap on it, it feels like a champion boat. Another thing I did notice up front, which is interesting to me, is 
they finally somebody finally put the trim buttons over there where you can get to them with your feet and they're not under your graph now I've talked about this with several friends personally I like the old style toggles versus what a lot of boat manufacturers are putting which are those electronic touch pads because those touch pads go out and they're expensive one of those goes out and it's a $12 switch uh, and they're easier to flip on and off the other thing I like up here step to your right for me Hank is this little deal right here that is that battery thing where you can disconnect your battery so if your trolling motor goes out which is gonna happen I don't care what brand you have and you got a spare or you can get to a spare you don't have to dismantle the front of the boat you pull one allen wrench you unscrew that deal and you're back fishing I mean in my Ranger boat if I had to change my trolling motor out and I had the tools to do it it would probably take me a half an hour if I was in a big hurry uh, this one I think I could do it in way under 10 minutes so that's just a little thing that I like about this boat that uh, again uh, I've seen that in other boats and you may be able to get that in a Ranger I don't know but I like that in this boat as well the dash setup I talked about it earlier it's pretty clean right you could put a uh, you could put a, one of those mounts you know several of them make them bass boat technologies makes them where you could put your graphs up here uh, you know that's personal preference uh, you do have here which I like a lot you've got USB plugs so you see we're charging our uh, we're charging our uh, GoPro right now I would love to see which this boat and I don't know right now that any boat has it I'd love to see somebody put a USB charger in a box so I could leave my phone put up and charging but uh, that's not in this boat I don't know that we'll see that in any boat so there's a note to any of you boat manufacturers paying attention it's got really good snap locks on those uh, so on the box lids there's something I like about this boat and there's something I don't like I really like these and I like these because as opposed to like in a Triton where they're a hook and you're going to break a rod on them, uh, these aren't. They're clean so a rod won't hook under them. I don't love having two snaps on that to, because it's a pain in the butt. You know, you got to undo one and undo another. And that's real, real nitpicky. And you said some of the bass caps are single? Yes, sir. So when you choose the, the Cougar top cap, it is a single lock. Now the reason that these are, I will, I do admit, they are tougher to open and that comes with any new boat that you get you're going to have little niches that you have to learn with it on our bass cats on any bass cat these these compartments are are truly watertight you can see there's all the gas getting right here mm -hmm. which makes it a tight fit which also it's makes also it, a new carpet it's also brand new carpet and this is some of the nicest carpet that you can really get you know it's 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 nice carpet brand Good new point it's, and it, it is it's 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 really really high quality carpet i don't know the weight of it but you can feel it when you stand on it or when you sit on it yeah but the, the it's all all the compartments are gasketed which creates for an incredibly incredibly dry compartment status and so that's just something that you can say is nitpicky but for me personally as, as also as a tournament angler um we don't stop fishing when it's raining or when no, it's snowing or when it's sleeting so i like my stuff to stay dry and that's what's going to allow it to stay dry uh one other thing i do like by the way so when you pull up to a dock this is smart to have a uh to have a uh, a cleat right there now i'm sure they did that so you wouldn't tie to that but as opposed to having to use the back one or the front one or the front one or the back one however you want to do that i like this so when you pull up to a dock you can just loop your rope go park the truck or or go get the truck whichever the case may be by the way i said something to hank and i said hey this, this boat's missing <coughs> excuse me somewhere to store your scissors and your pliers and he said no it's not and this actually is a pretty cool little deal so it's got a little foam deal right there and they're out of your way I told my wife yesterday my flip-flops are going to be the, the death of me eventually and you can't hardly get on those so that's a cool little piece as well you see where they've got your uh, they got your ruler store down there uh, one thing I did note here is my, my butts are a little bit gonna be pretty tight going in there actually I guess they fit Nope. Oh, okay I take that back I was gonna say that was a problem but it's not it actually fits I was trying to do that at 60 miles an hour and it wasn't working out so good uh got lighting that's pretty cool you can see there's one up there and one over there and it's well lit inside the boxes yeah all the boxes have the light so that's actually nice to have a led light right there so 
So if you're rigging, you're sitting down there, as Hank was talking about earlier, you've got a light right there close to you earlier or later if you're night fishing. All right, this one's going to score a point for uniqueness. And I wouldn't have known what this was until I saw Hank using it earlier. There's a, uh, a grip tape spot right there. Now, I'm not saying what you might do standing like this, but that's kind of handy. I kind of like that. <laughs> it's a, it's a interior design retail store. And then we also do, uh, we also do remodel and, and general construction. Hell yeah. Well, the right species and the wrong length. So we've gone to a little hydrilla flipping, and that one wanted him some prawn. Well, you think I've never unhooked a fish before. Hey, that fish just likes you. Mm -hmm. Wants to hang out with me for a while. I love a flipping bike, so much fun. Where did you say the net holder is in here? Highly convenient, and it's big. It goes all the way back. Well, there you go. It's a huge net. That's pretty cool. Actually, let's show that. It's a net holder. That's a cool deal. I was wondering what that little tag was for. So what, do you, what do you need? That's a good one. That might be a good one. Nope. Oh, I'm on the other side of you. Nope, you're under me. You're under me. I am. Nope, nope. you're over me. Drop shot strikes again. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I would say fishing report wise, I mean, we have mostly boat ridden and looked at the features, but you can certainly get bread out of some brush piles. That pile is in about 18, 19 feet of water. We've not caught any good fish. About, about 11 o'clock, we're fixing to knock off. I'll get some more fishing in later this week. This was mostly about just getting out in this boat and letting you guys see it, but, uh, I did catch that one fish back here flipping the grass, but we flipped 300 yards of grass, and just to get one bite says, in that, at least in that area, uh, and we're in the beach area, there's not much of a grass bite right now. So I'll, uh, I'll finish up the grading on this boat. You guys will see it's going to be a good grade. I like the boat. There's a couple things I don't love about it, but it's more preference than it is quality is the way I'm going to say that. And I'll talk more about this, but this to me is still a specialty boat. I think there are certain bass cats that are specialty boats. I call them go fast boats. They're certainly really, really fishable boats. And then this sort of champion style hull is again a specialty boat. And there's gonna be champion and charger guys who absolutely love this boat. And there's gonna be bass cat guys who absolutely love this boat. So we'll talk more about it here in a little bit, but uh, that's a good, uh, at least got a bite to end the in the morning on and uh we'll finish this video up unless i'm about to catch an eight pounder on this last little drift uh, by the way so one of the things hank i noticed about these uh about the uh the locks i don't i don't know if those are perker or not can you lock these box lids yes so definitely. how do you do that so in your in your owner's bag that you'll get there'll be a, a set of keys there'll be a pair so one standard one backup and literally all you do is you lift up your latch and you see the little hole right there and it's basically it's a, a cylindrical um circle oh, keyhole but it's it just has um a bunch of little teeth in there goes in turns close it and it's locked okay so it does lock it up. does the, the whole boat locks up uh hank are there any options on this boat that aren't on this boat that you think guys should know about but cougar puma top cap uh right now we have this rigged with uh power pole blades and the hummingbird and Minn Kota features um you can get this with anything and i mean anything oh another thing that i want to talk about um so these are the standard um standard rims that come with the boat um they can get more bland um these are obviously great looking rims but they bass cat also does offer upgraded 18 inch rims okay. um so that is another feature when you do go up to 18 inch rim you do get a different fender That's um good. so a different yeah. fiberglass fender a little bit more sleek looking um and then after that, you have your back backup pod lights that are optional. They can be on one side, uh, both sides, not at all. 
Um, bunch of little different nicks and knacks. Um, also, the, the Atlas Jack plate is optional. Yep. Yamaha is optional. I don't think you're going to be able to get an Everridge anymore. Oh, but a uh, bunch of different features. Uh, you're gonna, definitely going to be seeing a boat coming with us um, from Ross Motorsports with the new Raptors. Um, and we'll be hopefully soon getting those in stock as soon as everything clears up. So um, for the guys who don't know, so the Raptor is the new Minn Kota. So it's basically made on a, similar to a, a power pole but it's made by Minn Kota. And I don't know if Minn Kota's moving away from the Talons or not, but I know that for sure the Raptor's the, the newest thing they got yeah, coming out. Newest, it's, it's lighter, cooler, um, really mimics the power pole in a lot of ways. I think the, 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 the Talon will still stay around because of 15 foot. All right, guys, so that's a morning in a, uh, in a Puma uh, hybrid, 20 foot, four inch. And I'll say, and I'm gonna step a little closer to the camera just to make sure I got good audio. So. I will say kudos to Bass Cat for doing something totally different than what they have historically done. Uh, I mean, they're, they are, and I'm going to say a go fast boat. Now, having said that, and I'm not picking on anybody here, but again, I'm going to tell you my experience. You think of a Bullet or an Allison, those are go fast boats, but to me, they are super specialty boats. I, I probably wouldn't tournament bat, bass fish out of a Bullet or an Allison. That's just me, no, right? No but I think I probably might bass fish out of a regular bass cat, but it's been years since I've been in one, so I'm interested to drive one. But this boat, I mean, I really think there's going to be a lot of champion and charger guys who are going to like it. And, and I, I'm going to score this boat later as I think about it. But what I will tell you is it's got excellent fit and finish. And by, what I mean by that is the glass is pretty, the carpet's pretty, the trim's good, the box lids are good. Um, just across the board, I'm real impressed. And I've always been, I, for years I've told people, I think some of the prettiest glass work is on a Bass Cat. Uh, but again, this particular model boat is gonna, there's only gonna be a certain group of guys who like that. Because a lot of guys did not like the Champion, right? They didn't like the ride in the no. Champion. I don't know why, but it, it I, does fish differently. <laughs> it fishes differently and the older models, um, they were skinnier. They were very tippy. Um, you get to one side or another, and, and even the newer champions, they it's they have that deep running hole. Um, and I chargers, think, chargers now. Yeah. Well, and even even a 2008 champion or 2006, yeah. like the one I that's have. That's right. That's right. You got a champion. Um, they, they they it's a long deep hole, and that's going to create, you know, a, a, a greater act point of access. You know, but it's also great on Ray Roberts in the timber, right? You can yeah. rock off, or yep. you can rock off something way easier than you yeah. can off my boat. Yep. But I'm impressed with the boat. I'm going to score it really well for this little test. And by the way, you got, I'm going to score my Ranger here later this week. So that video will be up pretty soon. And certainly fit and finish. Uh, my Ranger rides well. You're going to see the difference in those boats. But this boat's going to score really well. If you are in the market and if you have an interest in having a boat that rides like the old champions or like a Charger, I'm going to say you're a fool not to drive this boat before you buy that. Um, if you're a die-hard bass cat guy and you want to experience something that rides differently, I'd say you need to drive this boat yeah. too. So yeah. uh, that's my thoughts on it. Your thoughts? It's it's different. You know, the, the standard, whether you're coming from a, a Pantera background, the Pantera Classic, or even a Pantera 2, all the way up to your classic, uh, you know, your Puma, your Cougar, uh, any of the FTD series, Lynx, Era, Caracal, anything like that, they are all, I personally think, phenomenal boats. Um, I do work at Ross, I do all the marketing up there. Um, could be a little partial to things, but I am also a big, big, big tournament fisherman. Um, I do know the quality of boats and I know how those things can go. I love these boats. Um, this specific model, I think it is very unique. It is. Very unique. And, and there's, truthfully, we've had two of them and they both of them the first one sold within a week and a half and i don't expect this one lasting very much longer um then there's not a lot out there so if you if you're a diehard bass cat fan and you look at the back of a puma or a cougar because they have the same hole um and you start to look at this hole of the 203 hybrid you will see the differences in it there are fine detail and big detail differences in it i think and and it's i think it's really cool it's cool. a great idea 
couple of other things I'm thinking of as I sit here. Let's look at the trailer real quick. So we haven't talked much about that. Now, I'm going to say, guys, that should be standard on a boat. As a matter of fact, I think Bascat and maybe Nitro were the first couple to really put the step and the ladder. But you, you step here, right? You step here, and you're in your boat. I think that's really cool. You got the spare tire down low. It seems to bunk up on the trailer really nicely. It's got the uh, it's got the fold away on the side, and it's a great big heavy duty Fulton, which is nice. It means it comes up real easy. It cranks easy. You know, as far as fit and finish on a trailer, nice fiberglass, got big wide tires on it. Um, it's it's sharp. It's got really good backup lights on it. I noticed earlier as well. Uh, there's nothing about the trailer that specifically I dislike. Guys, and again, I've told you the good, and, and, and there's a couple of things that I wish the boat had. The one I wish it had, the seats don't move forward. And, and one thing I'll point out, by the way, so I've never been in this roomy of a cockpit. Um, when I was sitting in the passenger seat, I could barely reach that foot pad over there. This thing has a ton of room in the floorboard, and I guess that's pretty standard in these boats. It is, it yeah. is, and depending on the, on the model that you get, you'll see a, uh, a, a higher seat yep. depth or a shallower seat depth. Yep. So you'll be sitting farther in the boat or higher up in the boat. Your Coop Puma and Cougar are gonna be um, very similar in ride height. Once you get to the ear of the Caracal, the Lynx, you're gonna be sitting lower into the boat. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I noticed. Ooh, I left my scissors in there. Um, I will say, by the way, I like the steering wheel. I, I drove one years and years ago, but it, it almost feels more secure as opposed to a round steering wheel. I, you know, I, just something different. It's, it is different. Um, it's a little bit more sporty feel. Um, yep. A lot of race cars have a, have a, have a different style, more a squared off style wheel. I really like it. it. Gives you a better grip on it. And for people who do or don't know, when you are in a Bass Cat, it's not like a like a Ranger or a, I don't know, even a Skeeter, where you can kind of just relax, kind of have one hand on the wheel. When you're up to speed, you have to drive these boats. Yeah, no um, doubt. No doubt. Now you say that. But 68 coming across there, I turned loose of the wheel. That's true. Steady, That's but true. It will walk around on you a little bit uh, when you're really, really in it. So. Yep. All right. Well, thanks to Ross Motorsports and to Hank for coming out and spending the morning with me. Uh, I'm, in, I'm impressed with the boat. Uh, I've got a lot of boats to drive still, but uh, I like it. Nice boat. Fun morning. Thanks, Hank. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, guys, if you all have any questions at all about this boat or any of our other uh, inventory, we're also a four-wheeler, side-by-side -side motorcycle dealership. If you all have any questions, uh, look us up on our website, rossmotorsports.com. Um, also, give us a call at 936-634-6711. Like I said, guys, limited, limited inventory on these in the nation. Uh, but be on the lookout. We're going to be doing some more updates and videos on this boat. Cool deal. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay guys, back to Ken Smith Fishing World Headquarters here in Zavala, Texas. And it's time to score our Bascat Puma hybrid boat. So here we go. Okay, so remember the scoring is 0 to 9 is less than average, 10 to 12 is average, 13 to 16 is good, 17 to 18 is excellent, 19 to 20 you blew my socks off. Overall scoring, if you add those scores up, 0 to 45 less than average, 46 to 60 average, 60, by the way, for an average boat, um, you would have to be a value boat, right? You couldn't charge, to, in my mind, premium boat cost and put a boat, and, and, and I, it wouldn't make sense for me to buy a boat that scores under 60 if it wasn't a value, if it wasn't a less expensive boat. 61 to 80 would be good. Uh, on the higher end of that, probably something I would consider owning. Again, according to what causes it to score, a little bit less than excellent. 81 to 90 is excellent. 91 plus, I don't really see any boat scoring that high, and we talk about that. If you don't haven't seen the first part of this video, go watch part one where I cover this in detail. So let's talk about the Bass Cat Puma. So from a fishability standpoint, I'm going to score to 15 is good. The positives are the gunnels are low, so it's easy to fish out of. You guys saw us fishing out of. I like how far forward you can fish in the boat. And I also like that it's adjustable. That's a really cool feature. If you heard, remember Hank talking about you can move the trolling motor step back or the trolling motor hole back, if you will. Uh, it's not a cluttered front end. That's really nice. Uh, and then I like that there's good, easy access to the trim button, uh, which, again, I don't get in my current boat. The negatives, I don't like the box layout. The front two boxes are difficult to get to if I'm sitting in the floor. I guess as a day box, one of them might be handy. 
personally, I just don't like the box layouts. And again, this is me looking for a boat for me. Uh, the fishing surface is narrow. So 57 inches on the front deck at the poles, 74 on the back deck at the poles. Although the boat's only four inches thinner from a beam standpoint than my big old Z521C, I got a lot less fishing space there. Now you see in the boat, we're not crowding each other, but Hank's standing at the front, I'm standing beside him flipping. If we were both standing there throwing traps, throwing square bills, throwing A-rigs, I think it would get a little bit more crowded. Or if either one of us was a big guy, it would get a lot more crowded quickly. And then back to my tilty test, it's, it's not a terribly stable boat. It is not as tippy as my older champion was, but it's not as stable as some other boats that we're going to test because I've already tested some other boats and I know that. Fit and finish, I'm going to score it excellent, right? Um, 17 is an excellent. It's got beautiful glass. It's got great carpet. Uh, the deck's padded on the front deck. The boat has a real solid, a tight feel to it running down the boat. There's not any rattling that I heard going around. Now, by the way, I tested a brand new boat. Most of the boats I'm going to test are not going to be brand new boats. I'd rather test a boat that's six months or nine months old. But in this case, there's not many of these, and the only way to get a hold of one was to get a brand new boat. I like the seats. They're real kind of race car feeling seats with that wrap around back on them. And there's tons of driver and passenger leg room. Now, one note there, if you are short, so if you're under whatever that might be, five foot 10, you might want to sit in this boat because the, the steps are so far forward in that boat, I'm not sure that you could put your left foot anywhere to get real stabilized other than wherever you put your hot foot. So just a thought, if you're not a tall guy, to check that out before you buy that boat. Uh, fit and finish negatives. I'm, you know, although I understand about the deeper live wells, it's less water in there, so therefore less oxygen than bigger boats or than, than other boats in the same 20 and 21 foot class. And I also talked about this in the video. I do not like the double latches. That's just a hassle, and that's something it seems like they can fix. Now, Hank in the video said on the Cougar it's only one latch. But on the Cougar, on Bass Cat's website, as you saw in the cutout, it still shows two latches. So I'm not sure which one of those is correct. I will say, from looking at those two layouts, I would like the Cougar layout better because I would want that front box to be bigger, the big middle box to be bigger, and I'll take a smaller ice chest. I don't want an ice chest forward of my feet because I don't want the weight up there. Ranger's got one up there. I don't like it being to the front of the boat. I'd rather it be to the back of the boat from a weight distribution standpoint. Okay, performance. Uh, I scored a 16 as a good. Uh, it's an average speed for a 20 foot boat. It's a super dry ride. It's an, in my opinion, it's gonna be an excellent big water boat for a 20 footer. So before my 521, I ran a 520, so I was kind of thinking back to that boat. This is a 20 foot boat that's gonna ride more like a 21 foot boat. And then good nose control for trailing seas. However, I think you'd have to put a 23 pitch prop to really control that nose right because I feel like it's going to blow out on that 24. That's not a boat issue, that's a propping issue. And, and I'm going to say this, and, and nothing against Ross Motorsports. Ross Motorsports is a Bass Cat dealer, so they want their boats to go fast because that's what historically their customers have done. This is my opinion. I, Ross didn't say this to me, but I think that's probably why that boat is propped out with a 24 pitch. Again, I would want to run it. I would want to run it loaded with a 23 and a 24 before I selected a prop and drove away from the dealership for my final sale. The boat does have some cross chop slop in it. You saw it in, in the footage. That's very much a champion feel. That's just part and parcel of that that style of hull. You do have to drive it at speed. Now you you heard me mention I turn loose the wheel at like 68 miles an hour, but pretty soon thereafter it gets to walking around a little bit. So you can't just turn loose the wheel and go down the lake. And then again, the, the biggest hit that I saw on the boat was a hole shot. It, it is not a good hole shot on this boat with this prop with the live wells full. It was better without the live well full, but still wasn't great. So that's what gets me to a 16. Now you see up there at the top, if you're a traditional champion guy, you probably would score this boat a 19 using my same criteria because you understand what the champion hull did and, and sort of the challenges of that champion hull. But for Bass Cat guys, I think they're going to score it lower because they want to go faster. For me, I scored it a 16. 
Amenities, I score as a 14. I love that removable back deck lid. I like the access to the sump. You get to those bilge pumps and everything in there real easy. I love the dual fuel tanks. I like that quick total motor disconnect. Again, if you can get that, no matter what boat you buy as an option, that's a good little bit of money to spend. Um, and also, make a long story, a lot of times trolling motor issues come down to how good the connection is, and that's a place where you can check it without pulling a panel. Um, I love that rear deck spot with the grip tape uh, to relieve yourself. That's really cool, and you can hold the power pole and lean out. It's got USB ports in it. I think they're poorly placed, which I'm going to score them a little bit of negative on. I like the, all the lights above deck that you can switch on and off so you don't have to light up your entire boat, and it's easy. You don't have to go back to the driver's console to turn your lights on. I love that driver's cleat I talk about for tie-up. Uh, I love that the batteries are locked in place. As opposed to those cheapy straps, that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, I love that great co-angler handle. Okay, so I like that handle and on both sides your co-angler hang on to. My boat, there's nothing on their left and on the right they can either reach up a long way and grab the console Actually, they can grab with the console on either side, but that's not real comfortable. Or there's a strap underneath that's hard to pull out. It's really hard to hold on to. So I love the co-angler co oh crap handle. Negatives. I thought about this a lot. And I'm danging them for those rubber rod holders. They're just, they're, I just don't like them. They're kind of, to me, they're a little cheapy. Uh, by the way, the charger I did the next day has the same thing. I don't like that the seats don't adjust forward and back. That just seems like, and I understand there's storage under the seat, but they can figure that out. The where the USB plug is, it's on the left side of the console, so if your phone's plugged in, every time you get it in and out of the seat, your feet are going to get tangled up. It should be, in my opinion, on the right side wall, on the right side of the console, or again, ideally, put it in the box where I can keep my phone plugged in charging when it's raining or charge whatever other device I need to be charging in the boat. I don't know why nobody's done that. Uh, and then lastly, as I said earlier in amenities, show me something new, show me something revolutionary, and there's nothing new or revolutionary. So I give them a 14, better than average, but nothing that blew my socks off, maybe other than the removable box lid. Other than the removable box lid. Sorry, I got uh, guys with glass packs going through town here. Okay, trailer and other stuff. Uh, I love the trailer step. Now I know that's uh, standard and or optional on most boats these days. My next one will have one. I think the trailer's really good looking, right? It's a pretty trailer. It's got LED backup lights. I think those are probably optional. I'd get them. Uh, it's got a swing away tongue, which is pretty much standard on all boats, but it's something you kind of got to watch for. It's got a good heavy duty jack on it. By the way, I like that the jack is not built in. I broke the jack on my Ranger and it was my fault. I pulled it somewhere with it down. I didn't know it was down. And it's a pain to replace one. So I like that you can just unbolt them and stick them right back on there. Oil bath hubs, which I believe is the best technology available. Um, for me, big deal is how close is my dealer. So this scores well because Ross is less than 30 miles from where I'm sitting right now. And now I have not talked about this, but I have now talked to very big fiberglass shop, one in North Texas, one in Louisiana, one in Oklahoma, and one in Arkansas, sort of the surrounding states. And my question to them was this. You guys cut boats open for a living, right? We tear them up, they fix them. What are the three best built bass boats in your opinion today? And either what is the worst built bass boat or what boat are you seeing the most non-impact problems for? Now, I'm only going to mention that on a couple of boats that they said that about. But all four of them listed one boat, maybe two boats, but all four of them listed Bass Cat, one, two, or three as best built boat, which is impressive to me because again, those guys cut boats open. So that actually took this from 16 to 17 in the excellent space. Uh, negatives were no shocks, which again, I don't think is our own many boat trailers these days, but I understand do improve the ride and no parking brake. Man, I love my parking. That's got, the trailer's got brakes, but I love a brake that you can set when you want to leave it in the hotel parking lot and it doesn't go anywhere. So 17 on trailers and other stuff. That gives a total score on the Puma Hybrid of 79, good, almost excellent. Good, almost excellent. Champion owners, 
are going to score this boat a little bit higher. So guys who or, or guys who want that old champion style ride or charger ride with a little nicer top cap on it, they're going to score this boat in the 80s. It's going to score excellent for them. And Bass Cat guys who want to go faster, they're not. They're going to score this boat a little bit lower because they're going to lose that speed that they love to get out of this boat. Four, five, six, seven mile an hour speed difference in this boat versus a lot of other Bass Cats. So that is a really good score. I can already tell you, I've scored two other boats already. That is a really good score. We're going to score a lot more and we're going to stick to being just as stingy on points as I have been here. Nobody's going to score 100. Contingency. This, their contingency, it's called Bass Cat Quest, I believe, is very team friendly. Uh, if you have a 2018 or newer boat or, and you bought the boat less than two years ago, uh, and there's over 70 boats in their kind of tier one space. You can win up to 7,500 extra dollars. If there's over 125 boats, I think if I remember it, it goes up a little bit more. If both team members qualify in uh, Bass Champs Team Trail uh, and a bunch of other, or I think those two for us down here, big team events, if you both qualify for Quest with less than two years old boats, you can go up to 11,250. And again, there's, there's good money on Champs, Team Trail, Bassmaster Load, uh, uh, Opens, Elites, a lot of Major League Fishing and FLW Tour stuff. And then not quite as good down there for like ABA or BFL. It looked to me like you could only win 1,000, and I don't want to get too granular on their Quest program. But overall, looking at several others already, so I've already looked at a bunch of these before I started this process, that's really good. 17's really good. So if you're a tournament guy, you got to throw a little bit of weight towards the contingency prizes as well, especially if you're going to stay in a newer boat. So, in summary, this isn't the boat. This is not my next boat. Uh, I like it a lot, but truthfully, if I'm going to go to Bass Cat, speed is alluring, right? The ability to, to those, you know, 5% of the time, 3% of the time I'm in a bass boat and get smooth water and just flat want to outrun guys. If I'm going to be in a bass cat, bat, 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 bass cat, I think I want to go to a faster boat. Um, the, the ride wasn't that much better than my current boat, rough water ride. Now, again, my current boat's a foot longer than that boat, in all fairness. Actually, it's more than a foot longer than that boat. But if I'm going to go to something else, and if, if I were going to go to a bass cat, I want to go to a, a faster boat. So uh, I, I, would, I would happily fish out of this boat, but... I'm not going to buy this boat personally, and this is my search. But you can see from my scoring, I like the boat. It's a fine boat. Uh, and I could change my mind later and come back to it. But right now, uh, and even when I find whichever boat, if I find another boat to go to, I'm going to look at all of them before I make that decision. So there you go. Again, if you are a Bass Cat owner or you want a more traditional champion or charger ride, you should drive this boat. I, I did because they were so nice to me. I've put in the comments below the contact, the phone number, and the email address for Ross Motorsports. They're nice guys. They did not have to let me do this because as far as they knew, I was going to trash them. And I, I, I told them I wouldn't, but, you know, you can't always trust people for their words. Uh, so thank you again, guys, for letting me borrow this boat and sending Hank out with me. I really enjoyed getting to spend the day with him. Next boat, next week, will be the Charger 210 Elite. So for those of you... Again, who are interested in buying a new bass boat, stick with me. We're going to go through all of them, and, or a used bass boat. We're going to go through all of them, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and my opinions, and we're going to score every one. Thanks for tuning in to Ken Smith Fishing. If you got a buddy interested in a boat, please share this video with him. There will be a playlist with all of these videos in them on my YouTube channel. So please check it out. Thanks, guys.